really made a change in our class here. We've gone from microeconomics in two parts to this third part, which is macroeconomics. It's quite different. And uh, we now begin to explore a couple things, a couple, couple real changes from my perspective. One, I'm not going to be as worried about whether you get all the answers correct on the quiz. Yeah, that's important for your score. I get that. But I'm far more concerned this time with you understanding the data and the data analytics. In fact, being able to use the data. You'll notice that in modules 11 through 14, there will be a section called Create a Graph, where you have to actually create a graph. Now, the advantage in module 11 is all you have to do is exactly what I do. And I'll, I walk you through that step by step. And most students have found that pretty easy to, to follow along as they learn the complexities of FRED, which really isn't very complex, but it does have a lot of, of, of options uh, to it and gives you a lot of ways of looking at the economy. So that's, that's there, and, and that's in a different section. But in addition to FRED and its immense macroeconomic library of time series, there's a few other places that I want to introduce you to. In fact, there's a series on money, which we'll talk about in Module 12, but a series on inflation and in unemployment and GDP and some of the things that uh, are, are, are really more current. And the difference between Fred and these two pages I'm about to show you is that these two pages bring all of the important stuff to the top. And in Fred, you have to go find it. In other words, you have to know what, what you want before you can go find it. You have to actually specify, show me GDP or whatever it might be. So as we scroll down through module 11 here, uh, you'll see the different sections. Here's the create a graph section right here. And then as we go down, we're gonna talk about current data sources. And it, it comes back and says, yes, Fred is your primary data source, but there are two other sources. Let's take a look at these in turn. I'm gonna click on the real economy, pure economic analysis. And what comes up here is we're going into the section called uh, BEA.gov News Glance, Economy at a Glance. And our first glance is GDP. There it is right in front of you. We can click and get the current release and see exactly what it is that when you hear it on the news, what are they reading? They're reading that current release right there. Uh, and there's a quick guide here to the releases to help you understand how to read it. The next release is on October 30, which is just six days from when I'm recording this, and we'll get the third quarter of 2024. One of the problems with GDP is it takes a while for it to accumulate and to come out, and then it goes through revisions as the data is fine-tuned and, and so forth. So it's not the only thing that we look at, and actually by the time we take a look at it, it may be too late uh, if we're trying to decide whether there's been a change in the economy of any significant magnitude or what have you. Below this is personal income and outlays. Uh, what is personal income? How is it going? Well, it's going down. All right, we can see that from that trend. International accounts and so forth. So there's a lot of information here that I think would be very, very helpful for you. But the next data source I want to talk about would be the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, you didn't see it because of the way I did it, but if you go back to the module page, it's the second link, and it talks about the economy at a glance at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And you'll notice this is under data tools. And that's important because I'll come back and, and talk about this in a minute. But here we are at the US economy at a glance. And what do we see? Here's the unemployment rate, the change in payroll, employment, average hourly earnings, the consumer price index. Now, it is very important when you're using data to read the footnotes. Uh, I know a lot of times we read the book, we don't look at the footnotes, but in data, you have to, because this set of numbers right here is not the consumer price index. I know it's labeled that way. What is it? Well, let's go down. Number four. It is all items, U.S. city average, all urban customers on a base of 1982 to 83 or 84 is equal to 100. Yeah, that's current price index. That's prices. Oh, wait, it's one month percentage change 
seasonally adjusted. One month percentage change says that this current consumer price index is monthly inflation. In the assignment that I have you do, you're going to do percentage change year to year. So you're looking at annual inflation. So you've got to be careful how it's being presented. And, and that's exactly what these numbers are. They're, they look really, really small, but they're month to month changes. And notice it's gone up every single month with the exception of June, May was even. Okay. Now we can go down and on any of these, we can click like, let's look at unemployment rate and we will get to the page on unemployment. And what do we have here? Well, we have some handy charts. We have some news releases that by reading the headlines. And one of the things about governmental news releases, the headline gives you all the information. You dig in to see the rest. All right. So uh, here's the latest numbers and alongside the unemployment rate talks about civilian labor force participation rate, the employment population rate. And, and notice these little graphs. If we were to come out here and click on that, we get a 10 year historical view of the employment population ratio. Well, what do we see about the population ratio? Well, if you can visually follow my cursor, you notice that the employment population ratio, that is the percentage of people in the population who is actually working, has been increasing at a really steady rate. We then hit COVID, but let's pretend we didn't hit COVID. It would have continued to rise. And if you see that invisible line there where my cursor is, we haven't returned why does that mean? It means there's a lot of people in the population who was working, not working now. Not working now. So that can be explained by a lot of different things, including immigration. If all of them come in, they build the population base, but they don't work, they're not in the employment numbers, that could cause a lowering too. Uh, or it could be that there was such structural change and harm done by the shutting down of the government during COVID, we just haven't recovered. So anyway, if we go back to Bureau of Labor Statistics, and at this time I went to the heading and I'm back at the home page, I wanted to show you that here is the latest report on pretty much everything. The most important report or the latest report is going to be right there. Uh, there's also an inflation calculator if you'd like to know how much you know, a thousand dollars was, um, uh, or a thousand dollars in January of 2000, or you could change this. Let's go back to 1990. Is the same as what now? Okay, twenty-four uh, hundred dollars. Well, turn that around, and what you find out is the value of your money has been going down every single year because that's what inflation does. It erodes the value of your money. Your purchasing power goes away. So that's really one of the things that's really kind of important to understand about that. Now, if we go into the September jobless numbers, this is the HTML release, and you'll see that there's tons of data here uh, that you can look at. You can also go into it separately, like going to charts. And now we can look here. Uh, first one presented to us is state unemployment rate. We're in Ohio, it's 4.5%. Uh, uh, so it gives us, you know, that uh, uh, that idea. Uh, so we can see what's going on. So that's one chart. There are a bunch of different charts. Okay. So as you wander around through all of these different tools, you'll see a lot of different. Uh, things that are very, very interesting to you. And here we go back to the economy at a glance, and we can dig in here on any of these and take a look. Well, I've taken about all the amount of time I wanted to do. I wanted to give you a tour around those uh, current data sources so that you have an idea of what is coming up. And this video will be put right into this location so you can uh, return to it or other students in the future can come and see that directly right there. So have a great day. Hope everything's going well for you.